pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Gentlemen, we do have one addition to the agenda tonight. Um, it's for a uh, sale of 11.21 acres um, to Manicorp LLC in the amount of $383,584 here at the Riverside Industrial Park. Um, without objection, we'll make that item 5A. Okay, sir. Um, any other additions or deletions to the agenda? No, sir. Is there a motion to approve minutes from the last public business meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. All righty. Moving on. Um, item number one is uh, Elder Abuse Awareness Month, and uh, Courtney Thomas Winterberg couldn't be here this evening, but it reads as follows. Nearly one in ten senior citizens in the United States are abused or neglected each year, according to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. And elder abuse may mean physical and psychological harm, as well as financial exploitation or theft. The Board of Commissioners wishes to raise awareness for this type of abuse and neglect and to stress the importance of understanding, recognizing, and reporting suspected abuse and neglect. And we hereby do proclaim June 2020 as Elder Abuse Awareness Month here in Allegheny County, and that's signed all three commissioners. All righty, thank you. All right, moving on to our action agenda. Item number two is a contract with Connex um, for emergency upgrades to Alconnect and to expand capacity during the COVID-19 response. Uh, Administrator Bennett. Good evening, Commissioner. Um, so what you have in front of you tonight is a 269000 $700 from Connect to provide um, four upgrades and also to double the backbone capacity, um, especially at Patterson Creek Tower for Alcan. And as you know, we, we received COVID funding through the CARES Act. Uh, part of what that covers is um, broadband, increasing broadband service. This is a way we can do it with Connect in a quick way. One double capacity to expand the reach of uh, Connect. Uh, this will also allow Fiber Creek, Sky Packet, TWR to tie into this service, and it leads directly to homes, especially in the Old Town area, and, and many of the users will see speed up. So just have this in front of you tonight. Um, it's 269000 This is something we typically bid, but in this case, uh, we didn't, and, and he's ready to comment if need be. Really, this is a, a sole source proprietary thing. Now, Connect, you know, we go from the ground up 20 plus years ago. Um, Connect is the only vendor able to do this for us, so we're just asking for your blessing on it tonight so that we can proceed. They feel that they can be moving on this within six to eight weeks if you guys approve tonight. And maybe once you have any other comment. No, it's, uh, it's not sure about it. All right, and uh, th this is with the CARES Act money. This correct? is with CARES Act money. So this is this is not Allegheny <coughs> County budgeted money. This is CARES Act money. We, we plan for this in, in what we submitted to, to uh, budget management. So yeah, very good. Totally Commissioners, no comments. Mm -hmm. no, sorry, I'll make a motion. But we move forward with well, this. Well, certainly happy to expand broadband reliability any way we can. So, is there a second? Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. All right. Item number three is a proposed land sale um, involving Acreage State of Maryland. We have uh, Ms. Jennifer Walsh is here. I know that 
that there has been a question in the past related to sales. Uh, of course, we have to have your approval for sales over 100 acres, but I know in the past there's been a, a level of objection because the state was not required to pay property taxes, and so we know that that has since been, um, you know, the legislation was amended to, to alleviate that particular concern. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. There's also, as part of the packet provided, the, the property has been surveyed, and so the survey is also included. Great. Thank you. Um, yeah, we're, we're still working on a, on a couple land swaps, but this is, uh, you know, at, at this point, we don't think anything's going to move forward due to COVID. Um, so um, I'll make a motion that we approve the sale. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And opposed? Aye. And th thank you. It's nothing personal. I, I just don't agree with the, st the state buying up land and taking it to do nothing with. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. All right. Moving on to item number four, uh, gentlemen. From the beginning of uh, of COVID nineteen, I, I think we we've begun to reopen. Um, but before we we uh, turn back to normal, I, I think there's a few things that we need to address. So if you just bear with me for one second, um, while while we read this. Over the past few months, we've seen the economic destruction of COVID-19, and our small businesses have borne a heavy burden. We've seen the incredible loss of life in high-risk populations. Our nursing home and long-term care facilities have become the front lines, and we learned to work from home, study from home, and to hold and attend virtual meetings. We agreed to wear masks in public, stand six feet away, and including some cases, not see our loved ones. And while there's been some debate of a reopening, communities have gone through this together, united. We agreed that drastic measures were required, and we agreed that China has been irresponsible in its handling and reporting of COVID-19 early on. And rarely do we find ourselves so united and our community so engaged with local officials. And now we must act to be ready to ensure the safety of our communities. So um, we've been working on this over the past few months, and outlined below are four proposals whose implementation were, would improve American security while ensuring economic fairness of our citizens and businesses. And the first proposal is, is a statewide change in Maryland, while the others can be performed by all local governments. Um, so the more we, we dug into this, the more surprising it was. Uh, American pension systems invest significantly in Chinese companies. In May, the United States Senate unanimously passed a bill by Senators John Kennedy and Chris Van Hollen, which holds all publicly listed companies to the st same standards. The bill requires certification that each company is not under the control of a foreign government and increases disclosures regarding accounting practices. Roughly 95 percent of the companies whose financials are not up to current standards are Chinese companies. America has no oversight of Beijing business. To trust in Chinese companies is to trust in the Chinese government, which most recently this health crisis has shown we cannot do. In April, Luckin Coffee, which was found to have fabricated over $300 million in sales last year, the company touted as the Starbucks of China has of this writing lost 90% of its value since January, and it's impossible to determine which companies are cheating the system or lying to investors. The risk of <coughs> investing in these companies does not take into the account that as we invest, we are sending our money abroad and aiding the Chinese government in its goal to become a technological leader. Two of the top 10 equity holdings of the Maryland State Retirement and Pension System are Chinese companies. These two companies are also the two largest international holdings in the entire pension system. These ownership stakes should be reduced over the coming months, and we can reinvest our citizens' retirement in companies that are transparent and have our best interests in heart. There's ample opportunity to find uh, investments to achieve growth, growth and diversification without jeopardizing our long-term security. Uh, this second one it involves technology. Um, the state of Maryland and local governments should conduct a technology audit regarding the use of uh, Huawei components. Um, as some of you might know, um, several Chinese technology firms, including Huawei, which is the world's largest telecom supplier, 
has been scrutinized for, the, for their lack of transparency and potential theft of proprietary information. 2019, the company was classified as a threat to national security with fears that the Chinese government could use their equipment to spy on countries using their product. Companies have been banned from using Huawei's networking equipment since 2012, but other products remain on the market today. The United States banned their products from being used in, to create 5G communication networks, and this month, Canadian telecoms did the same. Um, moving forward, we're going to ensure that we don't use any Huawei products in any technology, and we would ask that any bidders who submit Huawei products, that, that they amend the bid to make sure they don't include their components. Um, number three, as we've seen during the COVID pandemic, supply chains from China have been significantly disrupted, causing delays and losses to all industry sectors. While the cost will always remain a primary factor, um, we need to ensure reliability and certainty for times of national or regional disaster. For all public bids, for local government, bidders should be required to list alternatives and price differences for domestic or non-Chinese materials if their bid package includes components that has a significant amount of Chinese exposure. This would limit delays, strengthen our supply chain, and give other foreign and domestic firms the opportunity to prosper. And gentlemen, last but not least is, is support for the people of Hong Kong, who are faced with ever-increasing restrictions on basic freedoms and human rights. The Chinese government continues to erode democratic values in Hong Kong, jail dissidents, and stifle opposition. Local governments should and can make clear that not only do we stand with the people of Hong Kong against these oppressive tactics, but we would welcome and aid them and the United States State Department in resettling any of those people to our communities. Not only would they be an economic asset, but they share a common language and as well as our view of liberty, freedom, and we would be very fortunate to welcome these people to our communities. So, gentlemen, the, uh, the resolution this evening would, would send a letter to the Maryland State Pension Board um, asking them to, to review their practice of having two, uh, two Chinese companies in their top 10 holdings of their portfolio, as well as the other three things listed. Very good, sir. Thank you, Commissioners. Do you need a, a motion to, to send a letter? We do. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And thank you very much. I, uh, I appreciate this, and we're sending this to other counties, and we expect them to do the same because we have been hit so hard, and, and everyone in the whole country can, uh, can do this and, and really help. So, all Very right. Good. Thank you. Okay, moving on um, to our consent agenda. You got it? Uh, yeah, I have it. All right. So our consent agenda is a pretty long one tonight. Uh, number Item number five is resolution 20-6. It involves uh, CDBG applications for COVID funding. Item 5A is the add-on for Manacorp. Item number six is a Keep Allegheny Beautiful affiliate resolution. Item seven is a, a fiscal 21 Ag land preservation easement. Item eight is a memorandum with George's Creek involving a ceiling project between them and the state of Maryland. Item nine is open space plan. Item number 10 is an agreement with the ARC. No, item number 11 is a grants policy involving Allegheny County. Item 12 is an emergency broadband education grant. Item 13 is a service agreement um, with UPMC Western Maryland. I think that involves the uh, uh, Brook Building. Yes. That's the Brook Building Maintenance Agreement. Item 14 is an amendment to the Cumberland Raceway. Item 15 is a bid for asphalt. Item 16 is a bid for uh, crushed stone. Item 17 is Polish Mountain Hill Climb uh, car event. And item 18 is a labor management agreement with FOP 144 Sheriff's Patrol. Jason, all good? And the Polish Mountain Hill Climb is planning they're moving forward right now. Um, there's still a few approvals they have to get. One of the approvals they have to get among state police is us. State police has approved it, so we're approving it. It's still going to be subject to the governor's stipulations, but this well, moves along. I, I hope it can happen because it is a great event. I encourage people to go out and see it because they can social distance. Yes. But it's, it's very, very good for the Flintstone Fire Department because it's one of their largest fundraisers. So. Yes, Sorry. Great. I'll yeah. do a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. All in favor? 
Aye. Aye. All righty. Administrator Bennett, anything? Attorney Beeman. Commissioner Brody. I have really nothing tonight except a, a shout out to Mr. Grapes. Let us know if you can hear it. We've upgraded the sound system. He notified me the last two meetings. We was having a little issue. Just everyone be safe and enjoy what the governor's offered us to open up. And Absolutely. Re restaurants will be open tomorrow at 5. And everything else is uh, almost back to normal next Friday at 5. Good. Um, looks exciting. The casinos. Yes, we're moving we'll forward also. Next Friday. Mr. Caparelli. Nothing else to add. That's all good news uh, in these crazy times. Uh, what, what more can you add? So I, I think that's all for this evening. I think that Dave said a couple weeks ago, sir, that when the restaurants get opened up, that he was going to take you and I out to dinner. So uh, we okay. can do that. I think he still is that in the record. Line. It's something. I, don't know. <laughs> uh, I, I, I just say, you know, it's more important than ever that we remain united, and uh, and, and our, our similarities are much bigger than our differences. So. Um, we, we uh, try to keep it nonpartisan as here as possible, and uh, I think that's important moving forward. And um, I will note we got so many thank you cards and, and, I, uh, and emails and everything from people that we were able to, uh, to get that money out the door on COVID relief. Um, so I, I think we probably got 50-some cards, emails, texts, thank yous. Um, that one level of government can actually get stuff done and get money out the door quickly. And so great job staff and everyone else involved in that. And we still have money available. So if you haven't applied yet, there's still time and uh, we'll be processing those kind of as they come in. All right, everyone. With that, our next public business meeting will be Thursday, June 25th, 5 p.m. Thanks. Thank you.